risk associated with using physical intervention. We have been able to discuss and learn about what is physical intervention and the implication for its use. Now we want to talk about the risk associated with using physical intervention. Yes, when you use force on one, like I said, there are tendencies that you can hurt the person. Alright? Therefore, whenever you want to choose a particular technique that you have to use, yes, you need to put certain things into consideration. Yes? You need to consider what techniques to use, how long are you going to use it for, and how you are going to use it. Yes? Proper training and care is required in this case so that at the end of the day, we don't get, you know, to hurt uh, people. Nature of restraint. If we have to restrain anyone, we need to consider certain factors, such as the method of restraint. What method are you going to use? Are you going to restrain the person on the ground? Maybe. Is he on the street? On the seat? Is it on the wall? Or how are you going to do it? We also want to ensure that we are not using a method that is going to make the person, yes, to fall into a condition called positional asphyxia. Positional asphyxia occurs when the rib cage is being pressed, thereby the diaphragm will be unable to go in and out. Normally, when we are breathing, our rib cage goes in and out, right? And the diaphragm goes up and down. So when you now put someone in a position, yes, where you have already compressed the rib cage, it will affect the diaphragm. And the diaphragm will not be able to go up and down. This was the case with George Floyd in the United States. Uh, state of America, where he was, you know, restrained to the ground and he was unable to breathe. He was and, on his neck. and he complained he could not breathe. He complained he could not breathe and they ignored it. What happened? The guy died. Judge Floyd died. Wasn't it on his neck? No, no. Really they not. held him on the neck, hands at the back. The nail down on the torso, thereby compressing the rib cage. And as a result of that, he was unable to breathe. That is what you call positional asphyxia. When the rib cage is not able to go in and out, and the diaphragm is unable to go up and down. That labors the ability to breathe. It makes it very difficult for him to breathe. And that condition is what you call positional asphyxia. We also need to think of the duration of the restraint. The longer the time of restraint, the likelihood of, the higher the likelihood of injuries. These factors that need to be considered include situational factors. Before you can restrain someone, you need to think of the location. Breath? Is it a crowded place? 
You need to think of the environment. Is it a wet area? Is the floor even? Is it a wet floor? You need to consider how many staff you have on duty. Are you the only one there? You also need to consider is there going to be threats from other people? Like you have friends coming to your venue. And one of them now misbehaved and you want to restrain the person. Do you think the other friends will be looking at you or the families? You also need to consider are you able to assess medical support or medical services if anything happens? Do you have a first aider in place? You also need to consider the options available to you, which takes you to the dynamic risk assessment, your TAC and your SU model. Think safety. Yes, assess the situation, consider your option, and take action safely. I think also that's the size of the person, because what if they're significantly larger than you? And the soul is the subject, the person you're dealing with, the environment, and whether weapon is used. I'll be right back to your question. All the factors that needs to be considered is the individual factor. The individual you're dealing with. Does he have an existing injuries? What is the size? And what is the age? What is the physical state? Did he just, you know, consume food or alcohol? Or had he just taken medication? What is the mental state? What's the mental health? Is this someone with a history of violence? These are the things that you need to put into consideration before you select the techniques you are going to use. Vulnerable groups. When you are dealing with vulnerable groups, the people in this category include children and young people, older adults, individuals with mental health issues. Whenever you are dealing with this category of people, you should always use conflict management skills as a primary de-escalation technique. Whenever you are working with vulnerable groups, use de-escalation techniques. Acute behavioral disturbances. ABD, acute behavioral disturbances, is a medical emergency that can be caused by head injuries, tumors, high pressure, heat exhaustion, high or low blood pressure, antipsychotic drug abuse. Subjects, people suffering from ABD, they often have incredible strength and they do not feel any pain. They can die suddenly of cardiac arrest if not treated quickly. And people in this category, people who suffer ABD, they are often at a greater risk from positional asphyxia when physically restrained. So how do you tell who has ABD or not? A lot of people, they have this medical condition. A lot of people have head injuries. Maybe when they were young, a lot of people have tumors in their body. A lot of people have heat exhaustion. 
high temperature, high or low blood pressure, that is common everywhere. How would you know whether that has caused them ABD? You cannot tell. Now, if that person now comes to your venue and you don't know anything about their medical condition and you now decide to restrain them, people in this category, they can die suddenly of cardiac arrest. So we need to be very careful. So, what are the uh, pictures that you see? People that has ADD, you see them, extreme agitation, excitability, paranoid, great strength, aggression and resistance to pain, compliance techniques. So when you see someone displaying all these pictures, you need to do what? You need to step back. Use a de-escalation techniques. What if they're destroying the shirt? Now, what are the signs and symptoms that you see in them? People that has ADD, high temperature, Bizarre behavior, strange behavior, sustained mental and physical exhaustion and metabolic acidosis. Exhaustion means tiredness, fatigue. Metabolic acidosis is a kind of chemical reaction in your stomach when you consume certain food, which excretes certain acidic content. These are the signs and symptoms. Other things that you need to watch out for is psychosis. Psychosis can be as a result of underlying mental illness or drug induced. This may result in hallucination Paranoid or extreme fear as a result of delusional belief. Psychosis can lead to sudden death. And therefore, should be treated as a medical emergency. ABD and psychosis can result in sudden death, but should be treated as a medical emergency, use de-escalation techniques, verbal and non-verbal communication, distraction and calming techniques as appropriate to the situation. These are not the kind of people, yes, that you need to start restraining because of the risk. 